Welcome back to MVM. Today I have on the table Frozen Frontier from Arcane Wonders and Cosmodrome. This game takes place in the far future where Earth is getting low on resources and so a group of different corporations have to go out to the far edges of space in order to basically colonize an uninhabited planet, mine it for resources, and send those resources back to Earth. So that is kind of the setup of the game. Each one of the players is going to be taking on the role of a different corporation. These corporations come with different starting setups, some different abilities and things like that that make them a little bit thematic and a little bit asymmetric. And everyone is going to have a ship that they're going to be using to kind of move around the planet and uh, mine resources and place buildings and do just a bunch of different things with the ultimate goal of being the one to collect the most victory points. So there are a lot of ways to collect victory points in this game, but one of the main ways is by gathering resources in a really unique way and shipping those resources back to Earth during a shipment phase. Now this is one of those games that feels deceptively simple. When I tell you what you're doing on your turn, it sounds very easy, but there's so many different options to do and so many different ways to do things and different strategies to employ that the game is going to feel very tactical and very different every single game as you're adapting to the changing situations around you. But before I dive into that, let's take a look at the actual setup of the game. Now everyone's player board sits in front of them and you'll have a space for your corporation board, your different types of buildings, your AI tokens, the qubits that you have, which are credits in the game, and your resource board where you're going to be managing all of your different resources. Out here you actually have the main game board with all of the different cities that are in play. These boards can be kind of placed in different arrangements you'll see here, and the board does extend pretty far, so you, you might miss the very top of it on camera, but these spaces are all kind of connected to each other by these transit uh, tunnels, and the board does loop around, so you've got these little reminders here that tell you that you can actually travel from this side of the board all the way to the other. A key part of the game is going to be moving around these different boards to get to different cities over the course of the game. Each city is going to have a card dealt out to it at the start of the game. However, these cards will vanish as the game is being played. That's another key part of the game. You'll notice that within each city, there's going to be a number of different icons. You're going to have some spaces to put small or large buildings. You're going to have some spaces to put colonists, some spaces to place resources, and some spots to hold your AI tokens. Each one of these cities is kind of its own little area control element because you're going to be competing to put things in here in order to control that area at the end of the game. Over here, you're gonna have a few different boards. You're going to have the projects board where you're gonna hold the projects cards and the subsidy cards that you can collect over the game. You're gonna have some shipping cards and a development board, which is going to give you some tracks to move up. This industry track and this science track. This is how you're going to earn more scientists and engineers, which you can place out onto the city board. And you're gonna get a wide variety of different bonuses. You're gonna unlock some slots on your player board. You're gonna get some monetary benefits and some victory point benefits. And on the science side, you're going to get some research cards which you can earn that are going to give you even more of an asymmetric power by letting you kind of tuck these into your player board and gain some kind of an ability for the rest of the game. So going up this development track is very important. Now on your turn, it's like I said, pretty simple. You're just moving, collecting a card, and taking an action in that city. When you're moving, the first time you move, you're just gonna take your piece and you're gonna place it anywhere on the board in any space. But later, as you're moving, you're gonna be able to follow these chained lines and move to other locations. Normally, you can just move to one adjacent city. You can move a little farther than that if you want, if you wanna leave these uh, cubits behind. But wherever you end up, you're going to take the card from that location. Now, at the start of the game, these are all gonna have cards, but as players move along, you might come to a space and that card is already gone. That's fine, you just don't get to collect a card that particular turn, but you still get to take the action of that particular city. Now the card play in this game is a little bit like the game Brass. If you've played that game before, this will sound really familiar. Every one of these cards is going to have a building type and a location. So if you are at a location, you can play the location card to build any eligible building. But if you have a card in your hand with a specific building, you can build it wherever you're at as long as there's a proper space. Now you'll see here in every one of these cities, there's a number of different icons that represent different types of buildings. You can look on your player board, your player aid, it's gonna show you what all those different icons are, the types of icons. If the icon on the card matches the icon on the building space and it's free, nobody else is built there, then you get to take one of your buildings 
and place it there. Of course, each one of these buildings has a cost and they're all gonna give you some kind of reward. The cost is gonna be in spending some kind of resources on your resource board and the benefit is gonna be some kind of movement on these movement tracks over here, which like I said, are gonna get you just a wide variety of benefits. So building buildings is important. It's also gonna to contribute to the area control mechanic of controlling that particular city at the end of the game. So you're gonna be spending resources a lot to get rewards. Building buildings is one of the ways to progress your score. But like I said, you can use the card for either one. However, if you happen to be both in the city on the card and building the building on the card, meaning you've got a perfect match, you're using both parts of the card, that's considered completing a project. Instead of just discarding the card, you're going to actually take the card and tuck it under your player board as a completed project card, which is going to give you some kind of benefit, either an instantaneous benefit or some action benefit for the rest of the game, or just something that happens every income step. At the beginning of the game, you can hold two of these project cards, but if you go up the development tracks, you can unlock more spots to tuck more cards in. Now, that's kind of a perfect storm of things coming together. You have to be in the right city with the right card in your hand with a building you can afford to build that somebody else hasn't already built. So more often than not, you're not going to get to complete the project. You're going to use the card for just one part of that, either the building or the city. And that's fine. If you do it that way, you still get to build the building and then you get to draw one of these subsidy cards and take the bonus from whichever half of the subsidy card you want. This is also the game's timer. There is a deck of subsidy cards and you're gonna set out a number every single game. And as people go through them, that deck is gonna be smaller. When that deck is smaller, the round is going to end and you're going to move on to the next round. So there are only three rounds in the game. You're gonna go through this subsidy deck three times. Now, there's another way to draw subsidy cards other than buying buildings. And that's one of the other actions you can do on your turn if you can't afford to play a building or you don't have the right cards in your hand, you can just do what's, do what's calling raise funds, which is gonna get you some of those qubits to put on your player board and it's gonna give you another subsidy card as well. So the game does keep moving. But there is a third action you can do out on the board as well and this doesn't require a card. And this is the collaborate action, which is going to let you place these colonists in these different spots. And you'll see that there's blue to match blue and there's red to match red. So this is the third action you can do is just place them out there and you're either gonna gain some kind of production or you're gonna gain some kind of lab benefit. As you place scientists into these spaces, you're unlocking the lab for that city, allowing whoever is in that city to potentially take some kind of action. And if you're placing one of these engineers, you're unlocking another resource from your player board. So that's something I haven't talked about yet. I mentioned how this game handles resources in a very different way, and it does. You're managing your resources over here on this little storage board, but these empty spots indicate what you have available to spend. If you need to spend a particular resource to take an action or build a building or something, you're taking one of these qubits and you're placing it in the empty slot and you're locking it in there. So for example, at the start of the game, I have three spaces for aerogel. Over the course of the game, I can spend three aerogel and then I'm done. I can no longer spend aerogel. I have no ability to produce aerogel left in the game. I have to find ways to produce it. And that's where that production comes into play. It actually lets you remove placed cubes. They don't go into your supply. They are either removed from the game or they go out for production bonuses on a specific city tile. So you need to find ways to generate these resources to lose these cubes. But you don't just get the cubes. You have to find other ways like that raise funds action to get these cubes onto your board to then spend them. So it's a very interesting mechanic. I don't think I've ever seen a game handle resource management quite like this with this board. And of course there are three basic resources that you're trying to gain to spend to take these actions. And that fourth uh, resource I mentioned earlier, helium three. This is what the planet Earth needs in order to produce energy. So every round, you're going to have a requirement of sending helium. Once all the actions are done and the round is over, everyone is gonna to have to contribute some amount of helium three back to Earth. If you don't, you take one of these negative points tokens and you're gonna get negative points at the end of the game. Now, if you do, you're safe from the negative points. And you can also complete shipping contracts that are gonna be out as well. These require you to send back a certain number of different resources back to Earth. And if you do, you're gonna get some kind of instant benefit, some victory points for the end of the game. So you definitely want to be shipping a lot. You wanna be collecting resources and saving resources for that shipping. And again, that means both clearing off the spaces 
and having the free cubes to place out in that space, which can be a little difficult. Now you're going to go through this whole process three times, like I said, when you hit the end of the third round, that's when you're gonna do your in-game scoring. That's where area control of these different cities matter because everyone's gonna be putting out city markers over the course of the game. You're gonna be putting out buildings and, and even these little AI tokens, which can be put out to increase your control of that particular city. So you're gonna be scoring for each one of these cities and you're gonna be scoring based on what all has been built in there. So the juicier a city is, the more points it's going to score you. You're gonna have victory points that you acquired over the course of the game. You're gonna have some in-game scoring cards that you got from research. You're gonna have points from the different tracks. So there's just a lot of different ways that you can score points. So there are a lot of different strategies that you can employ in this game. Plus, since each corporation has a different ability, you're gonna be supplementing that ability with project cards that you've completed and some of the research cards that you've taken. You're gonna be growing out a very asymmetric build over the course of the game. And of course, the way that the cards come out, just everything that happens in this game and everything that other players do are going to change your tactical turn to turn decision. So while this is definitely a heavy strategy game where you really wanna have a plan, you're going to have to adapt that strategy because people are competing for these spaces. They're going to move to the space you want, take the card you want, build the building you want. So you're constantly looking at other players and there is a very high level of interaction even though there's no direct PVP, there's a ton of blocking people and taking resources and things that people really need for their setup. So. If this seems like the kind of game for you, definitely check out their campaign. It's coming soon. You'll be able to see what all the final components look like and what all of the final rules potentially look like and any stretch goals and things like that they might have hidden. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about this game. And you can always join us in the Discord community to talk about this game and all the other games we talk about every day. We would love to have you there. But as always, until I see you again, just keep having fun at the table. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.